official. Guys, we now have our top 12 contestants for the season 7 of Nigerian Idols. And trust me, Glory Elijah is fully set for the battle to begin. Because guys, I must confess, this season, ha! The contestants, the selection, right from the auditions to the top 35 theatre wigs, down to the final solo performance, these individuals, these people that came to audition this season, they did not come to play. They did not come to joke at all. They are all good, except for some lapses here and there. But guys, it was really, really a tough decision to make this season. I can imagine how tough it must have been for the judges to make their selection, but I'm actually proud of them this season. There was no, I don't think there was any bias involved. I don't think there was any um should i say sentiment involved yeah i mean the selection was great they did really well um however there is one person in the top 12 that <laughs> guys i know you will say okay gloria has come again but i will just go ahead and say it there's one person in the top 12 that i'm wondering like does this person really deserve to be there yes because to be very honest of the 35 the top 35 people that went through the theater week guys there were so many amazing singers and then I was asking myself, how did this particular person make it to top 12? Tell me something, if not for the drama that's to come. Because that person, as an individual, has presented his or herself to be very, very dramatic. You know what? I'm just going to zip my mouth mm, on this particular one. I don't want to say anything. I know a lot of you watching this video right now, you must have already started getting the idea of who I'm talking about. But I'm just going to keep quiet about this one for now. Because you guys to start bashing me before these contestants even start sharing their true selves on the stage right so let's let's try a deal let's try a deal um we're gonna go through their first performance next week and of course the votings will start let us wait and see how that particular person is going to perform all right we're gonna judge by how that particular person is going to perform and then i will see what i have to say but before i continue let me first of all welcome all of you back to my youtube channel you're welcome back my name is glory elijah this is Francis speaking with glory i am the girl with the tea now the tea of this video of course is going to be about the big reveal of the top 12 contestants for the season of nigerian idols as well as what i think about certain contestants that i wished would have made it through to the top 12 position yeah but before i get into all of that guys i'm just super excited i can't keep calm i don't know how many of you have noticed but we have just we have just we've just hit 200 freaking thousand on this channel ah! you know what you know what let me let me just let me calm down all right we're gonna celebrate offline yes let me quickly get into the video i don't want to waste your time let's just quickly get into the video first off congratulations to the top 12 contestants yes um i'm talking about gerald um abigail guys abigail is good she is good let's just leave it at that but she's good and then jordan oh my god the 20 year old basketball player from kaduna that boy is good and somehow i felt really sad that we did not get to see their final solo performance guys because the way the judges were super excited giving him a stand innovation i could perceive that he really slayed that performance so i was sad that we did not get to witness it but probably it's on the extra channel i'm going to try and check it out so moving forward um itoha guys i was just super excited the 17 year old girl really came prepared for this for this competition and i'm sure she's gonna go far and then we also had banti banti is very very unassuming you look at her and you think that okay she's this tomboyish kind of girl that might not really be able to sing but the moment she opens her mouth trust me you are mesmerized you are, she has this asha's kind of undertone in her voice voice texture silky kind of i love love listening to her sing so congratulations to banti we also had david opera you know, there's something about David Opera. I had a conversation about him the other day with a friend of mine who happens to know him. And I told my friend to tell David Opera that David Opera should calm down. I know that he can sing. He has the stage presence. He has the aura. He has the voice. He has the skill. He knows, like the guy knows say him know how to sing. However, in singing and performance, there's a thin line between being a good singer and being a singer that's very very proud yes and sometimes when david opera is singing 
I feel like that pride is coming into play somehow. And if there's one thing I've noticed about shows like Nigerian Idols, the judges, they don't like people that have pride, people that know that they know how to sing and they are overdoing it sometimes. Yes, that is why you see that sometimes in shows like this, the underdogs, they get to win. Yes, it's not like the underdogs don't know how to sing. The underdogs, they know how to sing. But because they present themselves to be extremely humble, very, very calm, very, very, oh, thank you, ma, thank you. So that kind of vibe, they get to win most of the time. So anybody that knows David Opera, kindly go and tell him that, brah, <laughs> you are a great singer. But you see that thing that is carrying your shoulder pad off sometimes? Kindly remove the shoulder pad, okay? And then come with your humble self to the, sh to the stage and perform. And you'll be all right. And so there's also Zadak. There's Faith. I don't know how many of you remember Faith from the MTN Yellow Star Season 1 show. That was in 2020. I reviewed that show. Check out my channel. you see it in one of the playlists. Faith was a very, very good singer back then. She still is a very, very good singer. But I can tell that there's been so much progress. Her voice texture has become richer than what it was as at the time she participated in the MTA Yellow Star show. And so I'm looking forward to seeing the magic that she's going to perform this season of Nigerian Idols. And then we had De <laughs> Okay, we had Debbie. Let's leave it at like that. We had Debbie. Debbie made it to the top 12. Interesting. And then we also had Progress, guys. The moment I saw that Progress made it through, I was super excited. That guy. And even the judges are giving Progress a no. Hey, hey, hey. I will go and look for them. We will fight. Because Progress, nah, he ain't going nowhere. And then we also had Precious and Joel. Guys, these two people, they broke the boundary of the judges' selection tonight. It was meant to be a top 10, but then the judges broke all protocols and decided to allow both of them to come through because of course, why not? They are amazing singers. The only problem that they had was that um, Precious, she completely forgot her lyrics, but then she held her ground and fought to the finish. So I was super excited that they made it through to the top 12. Now moving on to the contestants, I felt really sad that they did not make it through to the top 12 guys. I'm talking about Collins. Collins is that guy that sells phone parts, you know, and repairs phones. I was really sad because he had a peculiar problem. He was constantly forgetting his lyrics. And we know that you cannot be forgetting lyrics in a show like Nigerian Idol, so he did not make it through. I was really hurt, but then it is what it is. And then we had Remy. Listen, this is the part where I would say that I hate to say I told you so. Yes, but then I saw this coming. I saw this coming. And if you if you check my reviews from previous weeks, you will hear me say constantly that Remy has a very, very weak voice texture and is very, very slow and draggy, draggy. Some of you were contesting that with me. Well, see where it landed him. He did not make it through to the top 12. I, I felt really sad, but then I saw it coming. So I wasn't really surprised about it. And then there was Isioma. Guys, uh, hi. You know, Isioma's one really hurt me because I saw her audition. It was amazing. I was mesmerized. She's got the stage presence. She's got this confidence. Yeah, and I just felt like, nah, this girl has star quality. She totally needed to be in the top 12. But then sadly, I don't know what went wrong. She didn't get through to it. And then we also had Ochiora. I saw this one coming. I mean, you cannot be a country singer solely and function to your full capacity in a show like Nigerian Idols. There's gonna be a lot of struggles. And I don't know, guys, I feel like Ochiora was just too comfortable in his own zone yeah and it was going to definitely be a struggle for him to pull out of there and so we also had chukuka you see this chukuka story to be very frank with you all it made me shed a tear or two i cried and the reason is because last season chukuka had made it to the theater week and that was when he was you know sent home he didn't make it through to the next stage and then this season he made it through theater week and i remember during a review about his performance his voice the way he sings and all and i mentioned that his problem that i see is him picking very very high notes and so it's always very very difficult for him to now navigate his way around that high note where he has placed himself and so i knew it was going to be a problem and i was scared for him that he would not make it through to the top 12 and then lo and behold it happened i felt really bad for him but i feel like with each competition or each season, 
he gets better. And I am very positive that if he comes back next season, he's definitely going to make it through to top 10 or top 12 or top whatever. Mark my words. And then finally, Hassad. Yes, Hassad was another contestant that I noticed. I did a video the time Hassad auditioned and I said it that whoever gave that girl that ticket, I think it's uh, Mubi Asika, giving her that ticket, that golden ticket, it was a huge mistake. Yes, from the get-go. Because when she auditioned, she had so much pride. I mean, she didn't really do well. And then she was so confident that she did great. Aside that, she was really, really going flat. And she was still confident that she did great. So I was just, I was just waiting patiently because I knew she wasn't going to make it to top 12. No offense to anybody or even to Assad. But then I felt at that point in time, I mentioned this on that video, that she had a lot of work to do. So it wouldn't have been fair if they had given her that position other than other people that was more deserving of it. This is where I'm going to end this particular episode of Frank's with Glory, Elijah. I did not intend for this video to be too lengthy. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Which contestant did you wish would have made it to top 12? And I mentioned something at the beginning of this video about a particular contestant that's dramatic that I feel is there to cause drama on the show. I don't know. If you're suspecting of the contestants, put the name of that person that you suspect in the comment section below. I'll see you guys on another video. Have an amazing evening. Bye.